We enter the waiting room for the airport challenge and at the top there, there is the problem statement as well as the enter challenge space button where participants can join the challenge. At the bottom of the screen here, we have the facilitator control panel. And you can see as people enter the challenge, they will appear on this panel. So when I wanna start the challenge, I hit the start button and now you can see what it looks like from the participants point of view. They get a, the problem statement to look at and then also they're able to uh, change the focus area that they're looking at for the challenge and then enter their idea. Once they've entered their idea, they can hit submit and they're returned to a waiting space where they can choose to add another idea into the challenge. I can look back at the control panel and I can see as people are entering the ideas, how many ideas each person has put in and also how much time is remaining in the challenge. I can see across the top here too, the number of participants, how many ideas are being generated and I can keep a track of all of the steps within the challenge. You can also see across the top, there's a little warning that tells you, you must have a minimum of five active participants to have one of these challenges run. And you can see here, um, I can also stop the challenge at any point and move on to the next step. Here, I'm going to then push everyone into the next part of the challenge, which is the expanding ideas step. Expanding ideas is when your ideas are then sent on to the next person and they get to add or make suggestions to improve your idea. This is, this is not about criticism. This is about providing additional points. And we recommend people go yes and, which is an improvisation technique. So you can add to someone's idea, go yes, no matter how crazy, and then add to that idea. Once you've submitted one idea, you can expand on multiple ideas. You can expand on another person's idea. These will keep coming through until you reach a maximum percentage of how many ideas per person um, is available in the tool. We recommend that you would normally have at least two to three ideas per person generated for the expansion step to give you a good number of ideas across the tool. Again, back on the control screen, I can stop the challenge at any point or change the timer, and then I can push them into the next step. This is the integrate step. And this is the point where you see other people's feedback as well as your original idea, and you can combine these or reshape your original idea. This is your opportunity to be able to submit a new idea or to improve on your original idea or integrate as many ideas as you have submitted. As the facilitator, I am able to see how many ideas have been integrated. And again, if uh, we have reached our maximum, stop the timer and then move on to the next step. The final step is rating ideas. So now each person's ideas that have been, particularly that well, those who, that have been integrated are then pushed on for different people to rate. So you will need to rate them on the criteria. Those criteria are set by the person who has created the challenge. There are a number of criteria that can be set. In this case, we have four criteria, feasibility, creativity, costs, and desirability. Participants can also then provide feedback to the person who they're giving, whose idea they are rating. Once the challenge is finished, you stop the timer and then you can navigate to the leaderboard for that challenge. And here you will see the top scoring ideas and you're able to see who has provided those ideas and also who contributed to the ideas as well. All of the participants can also do this as well. They can navigate from their waiting area in the challenge across to the leaderboard.
They were able to also view the feedback on, and the rating on their individual ideas from the waiting room space. You are also able to access the results or the final, all of the final data by going to the results part in your menu and selecting the challenge that you were, particip that you were running. You can only see results, the full data set, if you have run the challenge yourself or created it. And in this case, you can then select various different views of the data. You can sort it by all kinds of criteria or the leaderboard. And then you can also export the data as a CSV file. And that's it for running a sprint challenge. Thank you.